Hello everyone, this is Lean and welcome back to the Time for Tea Designs YouTube channel. I already want to apologize for the length of this video. I know it's a bit longer than what you're used of the design team here. Um, but there is an explanation. I am doing some no line coloring, first of all. And I am also creating my background completely with Copic markers. Uh, which is not my standard thing to do. I personally think it's terrifying to create your own background or color with your markers on that background. Many people can do it. Um, I'm not that skilled. Uh, but I wanted to show you this because it's a simple way of creating a background. Truly, everyone can do this. I can do this, so you can do too. Um, but normally, I'm one of those people that really like to just ink blend a bit with my distressings. Um, so today, going a bit out of my comfort, taking a bit more time um, to show you everything. And I hope that it will help you, that maybe you give it a go as well. So as you saw in the beginning, I'm combining a lot of Time for Tea Designs products. But there are so many amazing stems and dyes and you can combine so many together. So that's why I'm doing it, just to show you as well. Um, it's really fun. I really wanted to feature the paper plane paws, but then I thought, well, it's lovely if I have a pig in the plane. And then you get the car critters stamp set where there is a pig. So I thought, that's amazing. And then I found the hugs and kisses stamp set that I haven't used yet. It's a shame. Uh, but since there are all pigs in this stamp set, <laughs> There are some amazing sentiments that you can definitely use with the pig that I found in another stamp set. So just to show you all the possibilities, I think sometimes we're afraid to combine several stamp sets. I have it. If I can make a card with one set, I normally do that. Just comfortable, easy. Um, but there are so many ways to stretch your stamps and your supplies. And this is one of them, just combining it uh, with another set that you have. And then for my background today, I'm using this amazing, yeah, there is not another word, the Hillside Village stamp set. Now, what I think is even more amazing about this stamp set is the die set. Um, because Joe... <laughs> was very clever. As you see here, I cut it out, then I stamped it out just to make sure that it was, well, aligned uh, with the die. But there isn't any die cutting on the bottom of this stem set, which means that you can create grass or hills as long as you want with those trees on top and it can be all one one part or one well how how can you say it you just don't have to add several layers to have an amazing part of grass and i thought that was genius like why would we cut the bottom off why now we can decide for ourselves how far we want the grass to go and it's so much fun and in the meantime, I'm already coloring. So I stamped it out with Nolan Coloring Ink. Uh, there are many brands that have it lately. I just have one from Ink Country, but whatever you have at home is good. If you don't have a Nolan Coloring Ink, then you can always use a really soft ink um, from any brand. It must be able to be colored in by the medium that you want to use. Uh, but there are so many really soft colors that you will not see in the end after coloring. If you use those, then you will be able to do some no-line coloring as well. So for the trees, I'm using a combination of the same green markers, but I'm switching it up a bit by changing the amount of markers that I'm using, the combination slightly different. And this way I have a few trees that have a lighter green and some others with some more darker markers in it but really simple also i'm trying to have that shadow on the right side not that you need to 
uh, you can do your shadows however you want to. Uh, from time to time I try to keep all the shadows on one side of all of the images but it's not easy and I don't think that it's always necessary. As long as you're having fun that's totally fine. The paper that I'm using today is Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper. There are many papers that work with alcohol markers. I tried Nina before and this one and if you are having trouble with bleeding then maybe it's the paper that you're using that cannot handle too much. <laughs> so for me the switch to Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper was better because of bleeding issues with Nina. Just in case. Um, so don't give up, maybe it's just the paper that you're using that is causing your images or your coloring to bleed outside of the lines. So those trees are almost colored in and then it was time to think about what I was going to do with the rest. So just to make it easy on myself and not having to mask things off, which would not be really hard to do um, because of the simplicity in this amazing stamp. I love the simplicity. I decided to try it out with my Copics. Now as I said in the beginning I'm not doing this very often. I think it's tempting <laughs> and I don't see myself as an expert so I'm just showing you how I created this background as well as the, the grass on the background um, just by using the same greens as on my trees and I'm just going from dark to light I'm working my way upwards going softer and softer in color and then it's all about just going back and forth truly I am not doing anything fancy here so if you like it try it out you can definitely do this I went with my lightest color that I was going to use and I went back and forth, back and forth, took the second one back and forth, back and forth and then I'm going to make sure that the transition, transition works out as well. So that's what we are doing, nothing more. And then I thought, well, maybe I need more. I wasn't sure yet how the layout of my card was going to be. That's always the case with me. I just start coloring and then I, I work my way <laughs> through it and get a card done. Uh, there are many people out there, maybe you as well, that are able to plan out cards. And I think that's incredible. I cannot do that. The moment that I plan a card, I am stuck. <laughs> I'm like, no, I know how much work this is going to be. I'm not going to make it. That's how I am. So here I have my images also stamped out with my No Line Coloring ink. Again, you can use a really soft ink color as well if you don't have a specific No Line Coloring ink. And then I started on coloring. So the planes are going to be colored in with warm grays. I'm using the same combinations for that. Um, also, if you don't want to rewatch the video but want to reuse some of the color combinations, these are also listed on the Time for Tea Designs and my personal blog. So you can definitely check it out there. You can also rewatch the video, of course. Uh, feel free to, of, always welcome. Um, but in case you just want to have a quick overview of the combos used today, then you can find it there. So here also going back and forth personally when I'm doing no line coloring I make sure that every part is finished before I start with another one. That also helps me to clearly see where I need to add shadows and try to define all the parts of the image. Now if you have trouble with Copics there are many mediums to color with and no line coloring you can do with everything. As long as you put your mind to it, you will be able to do that. Uh, but if you are experiencing trouble with getting those details of some of the images on there, then it can always help if you combine several mediums together. For example, sometimes I use colored pencils to help me with the details when I did some no line coloring with my markers. 
or if you are missing some markers to have that perfect combination for the perfect transition between the colors then it can also help if you perhaps have some pencils or something else but I only tried with pencils um, that might mimic that effect that you want so maybe just maybe you have a drawer filled with some other mediums that can help you definitely try it out because there will be a world opening for you um, if you find a combination that you really like also something that I cannot leave it out is a colorless blender I make several mistakes every time I'm making cards and I just really like the fact that I can fix them by using a colorless blender so I need it <laughs> now for the pig I first had some issues I added the details using my Copic multi-liner um, which is Copic friendly but I added it too late and the first pig that I tried to color and you can see the cross over it there was some bleeding and um, it was the first time that I had it but I thought what starting over so I stemmed it out again did the details I heat set it and I did it now again and I also waited with coloring the face because I just added those details to make sure that it wouldn't bleed. And then I'm not talking about the marker but about the black of the details. So I'm building up this image, working my way through it. First did the belly, made sure that I was happy with it, then the face. And if needed I am making sure that every part is defined. like adding more shadows underneath those ears because it's all the same color so you will have to play with some shadowing if <laughs> you want to do this um, but I think it's perfectly fine you can try this out you can use pencils if you need to you can use other mediums if you prefer coloring with those and just have fun and take your time because it's daunting and all personal opinions of course um, but I think that everyone can do this. So I'm going back and forth until I'm happy with the shadowing, with the definition that I brought to the image. And once I'm happy, I'm going to take all those matching dies and I'm going to cut this adorable pig and the planes out. And then there was one product that I didn't show in the beginning, which was the Slimline Trio Circle Die Set. I love it. Um, it also gives you the opportunity to do some American sized Slimline cards. If you know what I mean, Time for Tea Designs has a lot of UK uh, dies, so if you prefer those, definitely take another Slimline die. You can create the same card by using the other one as well. I am trimming out that bottom now I have those amazing stitching details and I also cut a white panel partially out using this die again so that I would have one whole slimline panel when I assembled the card. Now first I thought about ink blending that background because well it's separate there aren't any images it's really e easy but then I was like well everything is with Copic markers so why wouldn't I do this one with Copic markers and nothing is adhered so if this would have failed there was still the option to do a panel with some ink blending so I took the Copic markers and as you see here I'm using that thicker tip that I normally never use it because I wanted to fill up this panel really quickly going back and forth really without thinking that's that's the most important thing. And then I took the darkest of the four blue markers that I had. I scribbled some. I took the second darkest. I scribbled some next to the edges of the darkest one. And I actually worked my way towards the lightest marker by scribbling. And just having those areas coming from everywhere. Because the sky is, well, 
most of the time it's not completely the same blue it's a bit with with several um, several layers and I thought that this sort of resembled to that so as you can see now with the lightest I'm just making sure that there is even a better transition it doesn't have to be perfect because the sky is not perfect um, so I think that it's clear here that I did a really simple background using my Copic markers nothing fancy doable for everyone who wants to and that's it it's as simple as that I think it looks quite impressive personally as I said I never do this so I'm really happy with this card but I think if you like this you can do this too so for the sentiment as I said in the beginning, this amazing hugs and kisses is perfect to combine with this one as well. So I have this speech bubble with oink. And I can cut it out with some matching dyes for this set. And then I'm using the other sentiment. But I'm going to heat emboss it. Using some white embossing powder. And just stamping it out with embossing ink. And once that's melted, I have all the pieces for this card ready and just need to assemble everything. How amazing is that? I'm really happy that I actually took these hugs and kisses to help me with this card as well. Time to assemble. I first added the sky flat on top of my card base. Then this bottom part of my card I'm going to add using some foam tape and I'm covering the back of this part really well I'm always like that I'm doing that just to prevent bulking in mail and all those things uh, so that's something that I do maybe it's a bit extensive but whatever you like you just do and I I like this I like covering the complete back so I'm removing the backings, adding it to my car base, making sure to have it straight on there because once it's on there, it's really sticky, this Scotch 3M foam tape that I have. So it needs to be on there right. Still had to die cut the on details. Um, <laughs> And then I'm going to add the planes in the sky. I'm going to secure that pig by adding a bit of liquid glue. Putting it in that slit that is created by the dye. You can remove that part from the dye if you want to. But I really like it. I think it's genius that there is a slit for me. And it's perfect. I'm adding some thin foam squares on the back of this image. Well, images. And then I'm going to add this plane. Next up, some thin foam squares on the back of the speech bubble, which is so darling. And then it's just this final image that I have to adhere. Once all the images are adhered, that you can do whatever you like. You can add some glossy accents, some stickles, some glitter, some glamour. Um, some embellishments. I am going to add uh, some bubbles, little things from Lucy's Cards Bubbles, um, which I really, really adore. Why? Because these bubbles are iridescent. Personally, iridescent embellishments are the best. They have a shine, they can show up. Well, there are different colors that show up in those bubbles. But at the same time, it's a bit see-through and it will always match with your card. So I think that if you don't know what to add and you have something iridescent, I think it will go perfect. I love it. So adding those bubbles a bit randomly, going to add them using some liquid glue. And once they are on top of it, I am going to add some black lace pen on top of the eyes of the pig it's something that is not needed but from time to time it's really lovely to 
just add a tiny detail and that's it that is my card for today I'm really sorry about the length of the video but I hope that you enjoyed it and of course that you like the end result if you did you can always give this video a thumbs up I hope that you have an amazing day thank you so much for stopping by and we will be back soon with some new inspiration for you bye